Okay, welcome everyone, welcome to ODI, and welcome to this public event today on a new publication uh, produced by uh, a team in the Centre for Aid and Public Expenditure in ODI called the Age of Choice. Um, as per usual with our uh, public events, we are streaming this live, so the meeting is on the record, and it does also mean when you engage in questions, answers, comments later on, I'd like you to speak into a microphone, please, so that people online can hear the, uh, the discussion. Um, I think it's become fairly standard now for us to talk about uh, an increasingly diverse and complex architecture of traditional and non-traditional flows supporting development. Um, and we, we talk about this fairly openly and sometimes fairly loosely, but it's not always entirely clear what we're talking about and how much we're talking about. Um, and what really constitutes so-called traditional and non-traditional flows. Um, and just how much choice is there, in fact, for uh, partner countries seeking to engage with these flows uh, in reality, and what does this choice look like from the perspective of partner countries? Well, The Age of Choice, this new publication, is an attempt to try and begin a more evidence-based conversation, I think, about some of those issues. And I'm delighted to have some of the, the two main authors, or two of the main authors here, uh, to present the main findings. And I'm going to introduce them, and then I'll also introduce our two discussants, and then we'll get underway. So on my immediate left, uh, Roman Lee Greenhill is a research fellow in the Centre for Aid and Public Expenditure and is uh, a key uh, um, a lead author on the age <coughs> of choice. And she is, are you going to start off, mm -hmm. Romilly, on presenting some of the messaging from this uh, report. On my immediate right, Annalisa Prison, who is also in the Centre for Aid and Public Expenditure, another co-author of this uh, report. I should say another co-author is sitting mm -hmm. over there who's not presenting today, Andrew <laughs> Rogerson, but we're mm -hmm. delighted to have him in the room because all the hard questions will go to Andrew. <laughs> and um, uh, between them, Romilly and Annalisa will uh, spend about something in the region of 20 minutes just giving you the headlines of what they found in from this research. Uh, and then I'm going to pass over to our two excellent discussants, and we're delighted to have Matthew Martin here on the far right, here in the room, who is Director of Develop, um, uh, Development Finance International and who is an absolute sort of expert in many ways on this changing financial architecture uh, for development and, and will give us his reflections on some of the messages and some of the data, I think, in, in the report. And then we're also delighted to have uh, Ro Ronald Nkusi from Rwanda, who's sitting there in Kigali, hopefully. Um, where are you, Ronald? I'm in Kigali. You are in Kigali. <laughs> That's great. And, and Rodel is Director of External Finance in the Ministry of Finance and Economic Planning. He's also a good friend to us here in ODI. He's participated in, in fair, various events. And we're delighted that Ronald's offered to kind of give a real country perspective on how, you know, what does all this stuff mean from the perspective of a, of, of a recipient of some of these financial flows? How real is the choice, in fact? when it comes down to it. And we'll be looking forward to hearing your comments in a while, Ronald. So with no further ado, I'm going to pass over to Romilly to get us going. Great. 